Okay, hold on. Hey team, what's <laughs> up? I'm gonna turn you around so you can see all this awesomeness happening over here. Kind of hard to coordinate. <laughs> all right, I just don't want anybody to miss this because this is gonna be epic. So excited. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. Oh my gosh, okay, so. Today, our special guest is Elsa Morgan, <laughs> the queen of Australia. I just, <laughs> queen of Australia. She's, so, oh, you guys, she's, get that cat out of here. Our cat is a freak, I swear. She starts acting up as soon as we get on one of these videos every single time. So, Elsa only signed up four months ago. She's already master seller times three and heading towards four, which is insane. <laughs> Um, she's doing amazing. She signed up like over 25 people in Australia already. She's a married mom of two. She did the corporate world for 20 years. Got sick of it, <laughs> like a lot of people do. She said at one point she did 75 flights in one year. Can you like imagine? I can't imagine that. <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, I love to fly, but that's insane. Um, she found network marketing three years ago, and she knew that this was her her way to find her time freedom. Um, and when she saw direct sellers, she basically knew that this was her shot to rule the world, <laughs> basically. So she's going to do it, I know it. So Elsa, I'm super, super, super excited. She's gonna tell us um, exactly what she did to launch Australia um, and tell us her secrets. <laughs> 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 yeah, the secret sauce. <laughs> Especially with uh, Germany opening up in like a week. Like we want, we want the goods on how, how you did this. So we're super excited and I'm not going to take any more time from you. So. Oh, well, thank you so much for the intro. I really appreciate oh, it. And gosh. I just want to um, take the opportunity to thank both of you, uh, you know, for going first. I think I mentioned that to Derek. Um, at one point that, you know, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be here. So thank you so much guys for, you know, capturing the vision and that's why we're here. And I, and I have to take the opportunity to say thanks to Trey, um, who's just been an amazing upline and sponsor to me and uh, I'm learning every day. I'm getting emotional talking about it, so I'll just start. <laughs> um, yeah, I discovered um, network marketing three years ago and I, you know, I did it all wrong. Like most people do in the first year, um, you know, that is, you know, I spanned my entire Facebook and I just want to give her, paint everybody the picture of a, a very quickly of my journey. Uh, so I, I just want people to know that it is a journey that got me to where I am today. Um, it wasn't something that I just decided that I was going to do. It's certainly been a learning process. Um, so the first year I did it all wrong. In the second year, I started to appreciate uh, what was required and I actually engaged in an external mentor and he basically opened my eyes to, you know, what I really needed to do and that was work on myself. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when I wasn't seeing results, um, you know, it was directly proportioned to the amount of work I was doing on myself. And so when um, I joined uh, Direct Sellers, I was literally at a standpoint because I'd been watching Trey for quite a number of months, close to a year, in fact, um, and I, you know, my gut feeling had always told me that I needed to reach out and, uh, and have a, a discussion with him um, because I really resonated with his messages um, and the way that he um, he taught. And then um, when I did, in fact, reach out to him and I committed to coming on board with Direct Sellers, I decided to really go a hundred percent all in, um, and that's not just by numbers. I mean by committing myself to personally develop myself every single day without fail, no matter what numbers I did. So I, I just want to impart the that message to people that whilst I will show I will talk through the mechanics of what I've actually done, a large portion of my of what I've generated um, has to do with the amount of personal development that I do every day and I invest in myself every day. And I truly believe that, that the people that I've attracted into my team um, are quality people. And so I, and I know that that's got a lot to do with the person that I'm becoming. Um, and so I, I just want to say that to people because whilst you, you can do all the mechanics and you can do the numbers, but if you don't work on yourself, you, you're, you're not going to have a sustainable business. And that's really, really important if you want longevity in this profession, right? So um, I'll just start off by saying that um, 
last week, in fact, this week just gone by, is the very first time that I ex ever, ever mentioned direct sellers on my personal page. Um, in the four months that I've been at uh, direct sellers, I've never once mentioned the company name at all. Um, I'm a firm believer of attraction marketing and I brand myself every single day. So that's part of my strategy is uh, branding. I'll, I'll take a photo of myself with a wine glass and, you know, and I'll, I'll peak interest by that way. I'll do a lot of uh, FOMO posts. I'll probably do a FOMO post once every week to two weeks about what I'm working on without giving away um, who I'm with. So this past week is, was the fir first time that I'd ever mentioned direct sellers and probably will be, you know, it won't be for a very, very long time <laughs> that I'll mention it again. So that's number one, right? Um, number two is I do personal development every single day. I do an hour every day. Um, and basically that incorporates, I'm part of Rank Makers and I actually listen to Ray first thing and I do every single action step that he tells us to do. I do that without fail, right? So that's part of my daily method of operation. Plus I also uh, do, I also watch Austin and Trey every day and I also read for 15 minutes and that makes up my one hour every single day. Um, and then again, that's, that's an important part of setting up my day. And I also, I mean, this is a little bit more um, technical, I suppose, but I also do goals and visualizations as well. And so I do that before I even start prospecting. So those things are part of my daily method of op operation every single day. So in terms of um, the mechanics, what I did was at the start of January, um, I decided to create a private Facebook group. Um, and basically the idea behind that is that I would, uh, create value, right, and um, create engagement. And so you you need to understand that um, people look, you know, that they want to know, like, and trust you, but they're also looking from afar, right? And and so the idea is that you create engagement in this group and um, combined with corporate posts and my own posts, um, it's about creating that interest and maintaining that interest and then it gets to a point where people go okay i've seen enough now to make a decision right so i actively prospect people every single day so i have a set figure that i do every single day plus i also uh re do reach outs through from responses in my posts create general engagement and conversation which leads to people asking me what i'm doing because they don't know what i'm doing um, and then I, I offer the invitation of, you know, are you open to having a look at what I'm doing? And I send them the what's this wine um, site clip. And then I also mention, hey, I've got a private Facebook group. If you just want to go in and just have a look, uh, I'm happy to add you in there. And I've had almost 100% um, acceptance. And so people, you know, I pop them in there. I tag them on a couple of things that are relevant in the beginning. And then I just let them watch, right? Um, and then what I do, and, and it's, it's actually a, a technique that um, some top leaders in another company actually use and I've adopted it. It's called the ATM method. So basically, every time I do something of significance, like yesterday I posted that a th over a thousand people had joined um, in Australia. So that's a pretty significant post. So what I do is anybody that's sitting on the fence, I'll actually tag them in that post. Right. And then what I do is I'll follow up a couple of hours later and say, hey, how are you going? You know, um, I hope you're having a great week. I just wanted just to let you know really quickly. I've tagged you in a post. Over a thousand people have joined, um, you know, let me know what your thoughts are or something like that. So it's an update and it keeps people engaged. So they'll go, oh, OK, I'll go check it out. Right. And, and that essentially has been my method. Right. Um, and it is very, very duplicatable. So it's very easy. You just pop people into the group. Um, when you see something of significance that might interest or pique somebody's interest, um, you tag them in that and you follow up with a message. So that way you're keeping them engaged into something that's relevant to them. Right. Um, I always uh, copy all of corporate's um, posts every single day into that group and the reason why I do that is to try and maintain branding um, and the messaging straight from corporate so I don't stray from compliance which I know that um, Tony would be really happy with <laughs> um, so I do the corporate post first thing in the morning and then I might do another 
um, a post relating to something to do with the business or anything like that. So starting from next week, I'm starting to showcase some of the team members in Relentless who have had success. Um, you know, or who want to showcase their journey um, through either an interview or through posts. So people can start finding people that they're relatable to and go, oh, this is a mum of two kids that's retired from a job and, you know, she's doing it so I can do it. So you always have, you know, people need to find that relatability. Um, and so that's essentially what's been the mechanics behind my strategy. Um, I haven't really done any Zooms apart from interviewing Ross George and PJ. Uh, and Trey, so we, I just did individual uh, interviews of, of, you know, the three individuals and, um, and that's it. I haven't done any live events or anything like that. It's purely just been creating this private Facebook group, popping them in there, creating content every single day relating to the opportunity. Nothing spammy, it's all value, right? And, um, and copying posts from corporate, tagging people in there, following up with a message and just keeping them engaged. And I've had very few people drop out. So it's, it, it's a, a process that actually works and it keeps people engaged and they can start seeing in a closed environment rather than just a Zoom, which is just a one-off environment and exposure. Um, this is more like a, a journey where they can come in and they have a look at, you know, where we're going along the way. And then they go, you know what, I really want to be a part of this. And that's essentially what happened um, leading up to the pre-launch is that people were starting to reach out to me going, you know what, I've had a really good look and I've followed, it all, your, followed all your posts. Um, I want to be a part of this. And I'm still getting that. <laughs> so, and that is essentially the key. And you know, you don't, you know, each individual doesn't necessarily have to do one on its own. You can if you, if you really want to. Um, I just happen to create this particular group and now all of Relentless is in there. Um, and basically we just, you know, we're, we're responsible for our own individual um, prospects, right? And we're all adults here and I think, you know, full of integrity. So um, that's the key. Um, and, and that's it. It's about showcasing quality content um, that's relevant to what people are wanting to, to uh, look for, right? Um, and the only other hot tip that I do want to um, mention, and I, I'm happy to take question and answers, right, um, after this, is that during the sign-up process, I know that it's very common for people to send out the links to people and just say, here's my link, you know, just sign up. I, I don't ever, ever, ever do that. I actually, um, when somebody says to me they're ready to sign up, and I think some of my team are on the here and they'll verify this, um, what I do is I create an appointment within Messenger, right? So I set that appointment and I get them on a call and only then do they actually see the link, right? Or I'll walk through that sign-up process with them. So I'm holding their hand right throughout to close the actual um, opportunity right? And then talk them through the next steps. I never ever just send a link to somebody. Um, and I know that that's been a, a, you know, sometimes a bit of a, a development thing um, about, um, I've sent out a link to someone and they just haven't signed up. You know, like, how do I get them to sign up? Well, for me, this has actually worked. And I suppose it, I'm, I'm lucky because I've got 20 years sales experience. So, Holding a prospect's hand right throughout to, to the end of the sales is very natural for me. But that is a really important part of the journey because you've got to appreciate that this person is engaging on a new journey with you and he's asking you to, to help them, you know, to get to their goals. And so you just need to just hold their hand right to the end of that signing process. Um, and that for me has really, really worked um, as well. So... That's pretty much it um, in terms of my mechanics. It's really, really simple. So um, nothing complicated. That's amazing. I love that tip about setting an appointment to sign up because I don't even do that. And <laughs> you just taught me something. Right. <laughs> like, that That's is, a great tip. That is genius. I, I don't know why I've never thought about doing that. So you like actually set an appointment in Messenger like, yes. Yeah, so, th so what you do is that, you know, for example, um, you know, you'll have a, a message that the message, uh, message bit and at the top, it'll say like Sherry Leisure, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you click on that name, right? And it'll take you to another screen and you scroll down and it says create plan and it'll bring you up a date. Oh. Um, and then, so then I create that plan and they know that that's when I'll contact them either through messenger or via phone. 
And that's when we do that sign up process. And then I talk to them about the next steps because I, I need to let them know that, hey, I'm going to tag you in a post. Everyone's going to welcome you in. Um, and then I've got to tag you into um, the training component. Nice. So that way they know that this is where they need to start off with. Right. And then I say to them, okay, look over the training um, and then come back to me when you've started having questions and let's set a time so I can answer some initial questions for you. So that's, that's my process. So I'm letting them know that they're just not just to sign up. Right. They are, I'm walking them through this journey. Right. And I think that's really important in these initial stages right. to keep that engagement going. That's genius. Right. <laughs> because, you know, what, what if you send a link to them and then uh, they don't sign up, then, then it's awkward, right? And it's like, yeah. you message them back, what, a day or two later, and you're like, uh, you haven't signed up yet? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. You know, you start doing that? So, and now all of a sudden, you're not in a position of posture because you're chasing them down. So, right. I love that, it. Exactly. Love it. Exactly. So, yeah. that's really been my mechanics. There's, there's nothing like, no no zooms or you know anything like that it's just purely a private facebook group and just keeping them engaged well that's simple and duplicate <laughs> <laughs> um, yes any happy to take well, questions first of all i want to say your accent rocks and i have a question what time is it there it is 20 past 11 in the morning Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're in tomorrow. I am in tomorrow. I'm in uh, Friday. That's awesome. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, guys. Any questions for Elsa while we have her on the Zoom? I you know can either know. unmute yourself or put it in the chat box. Yeah, either way. Either way. Yeah, us too. Always send the video, then nothing. <laughs> right. Or send the link to sign up and say, oh, I'm ready, and then they don't sign up. It happens to everybody. <clears throat> no questions. <laughs> Anybody? Don't be shy. Come on, guys. I know you have questions. Uh, uh, I have a question. Yeah. Nope. Go ahead. Um, you said something about like the ATM method. Yes. Was that, okay. Can you, can you, was that an acronym for something? Yes. That's add, add tag message. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So you add them in a relevant post, you tag them. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, you obviously you add them in the group, right? So once they're in there, you tag them in a relevant post. Um, and then you message them as a follow up um, to that to let them know that you, you've tagged them in and ha you know what did they think about it. And then on an ongoing basis, as relevant posts, not every single post, but something that is of significance, I would uh, continue tagging them and um, until I get a no uh, or a yes, I'm ready. And so far, yeah, it's it's been great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Someone asked if you send videos at all. Do you send videos? During the prospecting like, process, yes. I send them the what's this wine biz. Yeah. Right. And I, I basically just explain that in my message to watch the first clip and then if they want more information uh, to watch the second clip. And then I'll, I'll, I set a time to follow up. Cool. Yeah, setting that time to follow up is key. I don't think a lot of people do that. Yes. I, I think that, that people just send the video and say, hey, you know, I'll follow up with you tomorrow or something. And then yep. something happens and you get busy and don't follow up with them or, you know, you do follow up and they ignore you. So <laughs> setting that time to follow up to, or they'll say, oh, I haven't watched the video yet. Exactly. I told you I was going to follow up with you tomorrow, but why haven't you watched the video yet? But if you actually set that appointment, or set exactly. that follow-up time, they'll actually have a lot better chance, like not all the time, but a lot better chance of, watch, of watching that video. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and just on that, Sherry, as well, if someone comes back to me and says, you know, I haven't watched it, then my, my response back to them is, when can I follow up with you, right? So I let yeah. them create that, you know, them making the decision. Mm -hmm. And then when they if they say to me, say, um, Sunday night, um, you know, Sunday night. So I'll just say, well, it's seven o'clock for you. Okay. Cause then I, again, I'll create that appointment as a reminder for them. Right. Perfect. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. Love it. You guys, okay. that golden nugget is like <laughs> that is huge. You guys learned like even I learned something today. Like I'm gonna start doing that for sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I use that uh, that create plan in Messenger a lot. That's integral to my um, to my strategy. Love it. Uh, I got a question. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Hey, Elsa. Um, so I know I've seen uh, people talking in the Australian group and a couple other places that can you talk about the difference when it comes to um, talking to prospects in Australia as opposed to some of the hype that we might be used to doing in America? Because I know I've heard in your, in Australia, like your culture, they don't really like the hype and it's a big turnoff for you guys. Yeah, look, I, I, I actually, I am going to mention that on the corporate call and thank you for bringing that to my attention, um, Trip. Um, yeah, that is, that is key. It's um, the cultural differences between, um, you know, say for example, the US and, and Australia is, um, is a bit, there is a bit of a difference. Um, Australians tend to like to keep it real. Um, you know, we are a society that, um, that doesn't really warm to hype at all. So if you were to go to a prospect and say, hey man, you know, I've got this amazing opportunity and you know, it's growing at all rates and it's a ground floor, it's, no, it's just not gonna work, right? Um, the way that you would approach um, a prospect in Australia is, Hey Trip, how are you going? Uh, look, you know, I can see that you're a positive person and I like the fact that you, you really like spending time with your family. Um, and I like working with ambitious people. Um, you know, I know this might sound a little bit random, but you know, are you open to having a look at something that might potentially um, add an, another stream of income for you? Or something, something very, very casual uh, like that versus lots of hype and things like that um, is going to get you more of an opportunity to present uh, a clip versus um, the hype because people just don't indeed to that at all. Um, Australians tend to gravitate to the whole notion of mateship, right? We, we always look after our own, our friends um, and friendship. And this is why I think another reason why the private Facebook group has worked really well because they, when they know, like, and trust you, they stick, right? Um, and network marketing also has only really just started taking off uh, in Australia. Uh, direct sales has always has been there um, and network marketing, but it's never really been seen as something as a credible uh, form of income stream. Um, and now it has. So we've got a combination of people that are doing it right. And then there's, a com you know, other people that are doing it full of hype. And, you know, they're the people that unfortunately are not generating success. So my advice to you guys is to just really approach it from a really real authentic without any hype whatsoever. Um, and, you know, uh, they really, really like the whole mateship. And if you can relate to something Australian, they love that. You know, if you compliment, oh, I really love Australia because of this. I know that, for example, someone in our team in Relentless has a daughter named Sydney, right? Uh, that's perfect going, oh, I've named my daughter Sydney, you know, I mean, after the city. And, you know, that would just be an automatic win um, because we're just very, very much um, parochial that way and we're just easy going. Does that make sense, Trip? I know I went on a bit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm going to talk to my wife about changing our kids' names as well. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> I, well, I, that's not duplicatable, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it really is about just keeping it real and say, you know, in your case, you know, you're, you're, you're say for example, let's just use, use you as an example. Um, you could say, you know, hey, I've been doing this for, for quite some time and I've helped a lot of people. Um, you know, and just have that conversation versus you saying, hey, you know, I'm in this amazing ground floor opportunity that's like, you know, um, we're increasing at 500% month on month. And that might work in other markets, but in Australia, it just does not work. That's yeah. really good to know. I had no idea. <laughs> huh. Yeah, like we got to take into account like all these cultural differences, like different countries have different cultures. So probably yeah. it do us justice to read up a little bit as we open in new countries, read up on their culture. 
a little bit and find out what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing and that type of thing. So that was... Yeah. So for example, I, um, as part of my strategy for Germany, I actually reached out to someone who's on my Facebook friends list that I know that I've been friends with them for some time. And I asked them about, you know, what sorts of things should I take into account when I'm prospecting someone from Germany? Like, are there any cultural yeah. things that I shouldn't say? Should I mention, you know, anything in particular that um, I need to take into consideration in terms of language? Um, and, you know, they gave me some tips. And, that, and I think that's really important um, to be able to, to do. Um, another tip that I got from Johnny Green, who is a major industry uh, leader and trainer, and he said to me one day, um, you know, if you're launching in another country, uh, um, what I would recommend that you do is go to the restaurant, a restaurant with, you know, of that, say, for example, Germany, go to a German restaurant that's in Australia, and especially if they've got German owners or anything like that, and ask them about, um, you know what you know anything to do with about the country um, or if there's like German associations or anything like that um, really really does help as well um, with building that knowledge and um, about that country um, very good advice okay wait <laughs> Oh, Pam said maybe change the dog's name, Trip. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's duplicatable. <laughs> oh. um, Carrie asked, what attracted you to Trey? He keeps it real. Um, that's, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and again, it blends in from, you know, the culture that we have here is that, you know, he keeps it very real um, and, um, you know, not pointing any fingers at anybody in particular in the industry, but he's someone that uh, shows up every single day. Um, he actually walks the talk and that's, you know, that's what you, who you want to learn from is someone that is showing up every single day and you know is invested in that craft. Um, and so for me, I take that very seriously. Um, if I'm going to be signing up with someone and, um, and learning from them, I want to make sure that it's someone that is serious about it because I have big goals. So, um, and so I want to follow someone that's, that's, that's achieved what I want to achieve. Right. Did you, do you do three-way calls at all with like your, your downline or are you just strictly doing um, the Facebook group? Because I know your downlines are already starting to duplicate in Australia too. So, yep. How are you yep. doing them? Yeah, look, I, I, I do do three-way calls with my team. And I've also had three-way calls with Trey as well when I've had, um, I've, I've needed him too. So, um, so yeah, I believe in three-way calls because sometimes you need that third-party edification and validation from someone. Um, and, you know, especially if it's someone that's within the industry, um, and they are wanting to get some um, confirmation about, you know, anything. <laughs> um, or it's someone that is brand new to the industry um, and I've spoken to them and walked them through how they could potentially earn. I try to marry them up with someone that's very similar, that's come from a very similar background. Um, you know, so if it's, for example, a mum uh, with two kids that's, um, that's working full time, um, then I try and marry up and, and grab someone from the team that's got, you know, a mum with kids that, that was working full time and, and, you know, either is now earning a steady stream of income or has exited out of their circumstances and doing this full time. So I know that's pretty stock standard, but I, I yeah, I do make sure that I match people up. Cool. All right. Um... Someone asked, can you share what they told you for Germany? Oh, about the, yes. what you shouldn't be saying and <laughs> what you should be saying, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, from memory, um, they, it, they basically just said to me in terms of uh, initially, uh, no hype as well. <laughs> uh, no hype in Germany. Um, and they, I, they are a very conservative society. Um, because a lot of Europeans are. There are some countries that are flamboyant and, you know, over the top and all of that, but um, Germany is very, very conservative, so you need to be um, very conservative, 
conservative in your approach. Um, and also one thing they did say was that once they start engaging with you, maybe engage in um, either someone who's an interpreter, which for me doesn't work because I don't see that as duplicatable, right? Because I always have duplication in my mind, right? Um, but also maybe a, a, a translation service online and there's so many, right? So um, to, to grab a translation service online and just type in your message and, and, go, and go back and talk to them in German versus speaking to them in English. Okay. That was just a recommendation, they said, because that will go a long way. Awesome. So making an effort to speak their language will go a long way. That's right. Way. Yep. Annie said, I'm on Elsa's team and she is a true authentic leader. <laughs> I'll slip you the 50 later, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Awesome. Any last questions, guys? <laughs> Spell check. Spell check. <laughs> Cool. Going once, going twice. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Elsa. We have like five awesome golden nuggets here <laughs> that we like didn't even realize before you came on this call. So I appreciate you coming on here so much. Um, any no, thank you so much. It was fantastic. I definitely learned some new things myself. In fact, I have a couple of people in my queue that I'm going to utilize. <laughs> uh, exactly. So that's awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Sweet. Thank you again. Thank you so much. We will see you guys next week. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your Friday, Elsa. We're not even there yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Friday, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.